Welcome to our worship service today here at the Springs. Order of service is found in our worship bulletin today, and today is Christ the King Sunday. We worship Jesus as our King and give him the praise that he deserves, just as we do each and every week. Um, again, our order of service is found in the bulletin, or it'll be up on the screens for you. May God richly bless your worship this morning.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on us, Christ have mercy on us, Lord have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory you have broken the power of the evil one. Fill our hearts with joy and peace as we look with hope to the day when every creature in heaven and on earth will acclaim you, King of kings and Lord of lords, to your unending praise and glory, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 34, selected verses. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There will be, there they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in rich pastures on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. I will place over them a, a, a one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of our Lord. We'll sing together Psalm 47. It's printed for us in our bulletin. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. God reigns over the God is seated on his holy throne. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. God has ascended amid shouts of joy. The Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to Him a song of praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Our second lesson this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 28. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, 
So in Christ, all will be made alive, but each in his own turn. Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come. When he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that he does not include God himself, who put everything under, under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him, who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. The word of our Lord. Alleluia. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Alleluia. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Our God. We be to you, O Lord. Our gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 27, verses 27 through 31. This will also serve as our sermon text. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and they then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We confess our united faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, the Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, of one being with, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn, Beautiful Savior. Oh, <laughs> 
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As I said before the service, today is Christ the King Sunday. It is the last Sunday of our church year. We we end our church year by praising Jesus as the King of the universe. And then we have Thanksgiving service coming up uh, Wednesday night here and then Thursday at Shepherd of the, the Mountains. But then next week is Advent. Four more weeks until Christmas. I mean, year just flies by, right? Um, but Christ the King Sunday. What we do on Christ the King Sunday, again, we, we worship our God as King. And th- there are a number of different kings in our world. Do you know how many monarchies there are in the world right now? Rough guess, anyone? 45. 45 is the correct number. 45 monarchies in the world right now. And I want you to just think to yourself, how many actual kings or queens can you name? Yeah, one. Yeah, a lot, right? When you think of a king or a queen, who do you think? We think of Queen Elizabeth. And maybe you can name Prince Charles afterwards, or Harry, or someone after that. But, but those 44 others, we, we don't really think about very often. We, we just think about, for whatever reason, we have this fascination with England. The United Kingdom. People in our country do. And you think about the coronation day, when one day, I mean, Prince Charles is already 74, but one day when he finally becomes king, it's going to be a big deal. I mean, this is a shot from the royal wedding That happened a couple years ago. People woke up in the middle of the night, 3 a.m., to watch the royal wedding of someone that's probably not going to become king. So when Prince Charles finally gets that crown, I'm sure there's going to be a huge gathering. There's going to be the the world leaders from everywhere are going to be gathered together. It's going to be the social event of the century. Everyone getting together, worshiping him, not worshiping him, but praising him, the trumpets, all the guys with the red coats that never smile. Everyone's going to be out there praising the king and shouting, long live the king. And this is for a guy that is just the figurehead of a country, and it's not even our country. So, so many Americans are going to be interested in, in a guy that actually has no power in his own country and is not even part of our country. And you compare that to our king, to Jesus. He he wasn't crowned king in front of a huge crowd of people. It happened just in front of a few soldiers and Pontius Pilate. He's kind of a third-rate governor and kind of the backwater of the Roman Empire. Instead of getting glory with this wonderful crown put on his head, he got a crown of thorns. Instead of getting a golden scepter to show how much power he had, he was given a reed, a stick, and then beaten with it. Instead of getting praise, the soldiers spit on him. And instead of people shouting, long live the king, they took him away right after this to crucify him. Very, very different than how you would think that a king should be honored. This is our king. This is who he is. Someone that deserved all this glory, someone that deserved all this honor, but instead... Treat it like a criminal. Treat it like someone that should just be thrown away. The the people at this time, they would rather have Barabbas, a murderer, come out, rather than Jesus, the king of the universe. Jesus really is the king of the world. And and we could think to ourselves, you know, if I was there, if I was back in that time, I would have been giving Jesus the praise. I would have been giving Jesus the honor. I, I would be doing all the things that these people weren't. But I'm not sure that anything has really changed. All throughout our world, 
there are still people that do not see Jesus this way. They don't see Jesus as the king of the universe. They see Jesus as an influence, something that's influenced Western society or the laws that we have, but he's just one of many influences. There are other things out there that are just as important as Jesus. Or instead of viewing Jesus this way, maybe, maybe we like to view Jesus as just a little baby. And instead of asking him for help, we, we think of him as this innocent child that lived a long time ago. Or as a, a preacher that needs a haircut. When, when we look at Jesus, not in this way, but we assign him a different role in our lives, we really don't realize what Jesus does for us. He is the one ruling over this world. He is still the king. When, when he told his disciples, just before he ascended to heaven, right, that go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. After that, he said, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. I'll still be guarding you. I'll still be protecting you. I'll still be watching out for you. And that wasn't just for the disciples, that's for you too. Jesus truly cares about you. He cares about all 45 of those monarchies that we can't name. He cares about all of the subjects that are underneath those kings and queens. And not just as a group, right? Not just, I'm going to do the greatest good for the most amount of people, but he cares individually for each and every one of you. He cares about your troubles. He cares about your worries. He, he is watching out for you, leading you, guarding you, and protecting you. Along with all the other people in the world and all the other animals in the world and all of the laws of nature, everything is in the hands of our king. Even though he doesn't look powerful right here, I mean, Really think about this situation. Who showed power in this picture? Pilate. Yeah, Jesus, right? Pilate, you think, you think, okay, Pilate's the one in control because even Pilate said, don't you know that I have the power to free you or to put you to death? Pilate thought Jesus was innocent. Pilate wanted to free Jesus, but he couldn't because the people wouldn't let him. He was afraid that they would revolt. He did not have power over the crowd. He was afraid that he would get in trouble with Caesar, someone above him. He, he washed his hands of the whole situation and told the people, you know, this is on you. And they said, let, let his blood be on us and on our children. Pilate knew what the right thing to do was, but he could not carry it out because he was not strong enough. And you compare that with Jesus. At any moment, he could have called an army of angels to get him out of this situation. At any moment, he could have just walked away from the whole thing. But no one was going to stop him. No one was going to stop him from saving you. From winning those battles that you and I can't win. This is what our king did for us. This is what our king continues to do for us each and every day. It's, it's not just about having the power over the world. It's about using that power in the best way for each and every one of us. This is why Jesus deserves all the praise. This is why Jesus deserves all the honor. And the way that we praise our king by singing songs about him. And all we do, all we do is just tell what Jesus has done. Our Nicene Creed, or the Apostles' Creed that we say each and every week. Right? All we do is say, this is what Jesus did. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He rose again from the dead. He is sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. You just say what Jesus has done, and that is how we continue to praise him. I, I set up kind of a straw man argument uh, to start off this sermon, you know, kind of comparing that 
Prince Charles or one of these monarchs gets more praise than Jesus. But if you want to really look at it, take a step back and see who the real king of this world is, who really is being praised by the people on earth, there's only one person that is being praised all throughout the world today. And church is just like this, where people are going to sing praises. There's only one person that that happened five years ago and 50 years ago and 500 years ago and 5,000 years ago. Each and every week for all time, people have been continuing to praise our God through songs, through hymns, through prayer, through sacrifice. There's only one king. It's Jesus. He deserves the power. He deserves the glory. We give it to him. Give the king the glory that he deserves. Tim be the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds through salvation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise. Let's join together by singing the Create in Me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto be seated while we listen to an offertory. In our special prayers today, uh, we once again pray for the family and friends of Don Tews, who passed away a, a few weeks ago. We also pray for Carol's two, Carol Tews' sister, uh, Patricia, who is going in for back surgery this week. And we pray for Donna Notek, uh, who had ankle surgery this past week. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come to you today on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Christ for Patricia and Donna, both of whom are having surgery this week, we ask you to be with them and give them a full and speedy recovery. Lord, we also pray for the family and friends of Don Tews, who is now with you in everlasting glory, giving them the peace and comfort of knowing where Don is and where he will be forever and ever. In your name we pray. Amen. Please rise. Let's continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. you may take out your communion set. You may partake of it after we sing uh, the Agnus Dei, the O Christ Lamb of God. We continue with the words of institution. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the meal, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Son of God, you take away sin of the world, have mercy on us, O Christ, Son of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, O Christ, Lamb of God, Take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Amen. At this time you may, may remove the seal above the bread and take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given it to death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Then you may flip it over and carefully remove the seal above the wine and take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was poured out on the cross for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the one true faith into life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'm going to receive the Lord's Supper.
We join together in the song of Simeon. Lord, now you let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 We conclude our worship this morning with our next hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Lord of love, behold his hands and side, rich wounds yet visible above him, beauty glorified. No angel in the sky can fully bear that sight, but downward bends his wandering and mystery so bright. Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. In the Lord of heaven, enthroned in worlds above, crown him the king to whom he is given, the wondrous name of love. Crown him with many crowns as thrones before him fall. Crown him, ye kings, with many crowns for he is king of all. Good morning again.
Thanks for worshiping with us today. A um, couple of announcements for you. As I mentioned, on Wednesday evening at 6.30 here, we will have our Thanksgiving Eve service. Um, it's a joint service with the other churches traditionally in the area. Um, Light of the Valleys Lutheran Church in the North Valleys and then Shepherd of the Mountains uh, down in Reno. So normally we have one big service together because of COVID restrictions. We're going to have two of them. One here on Wednesday evening and then Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. down at Shepherd of the Mountains. So either service you're invited to attend and, and worship our God and give him thanks um, I will be preaching for that uh, this year. Then um, we have uh, Sunday school packets back there. Um, this week we are looking at the 12 spies. So there is an online Bible class uh, that's on our YouTube channel. It'll also be up on the webpage uh, a little bit later this morning. And then the following Wednesday, so a week from Wednesday, we'll begin our Advent services. Um, It'll be kind of just an evening devotion. We'll sing a couple of hymns and um, be talking about the different candles uh, that are lit throughout the Advent year. So the first one we'll talk about the prophecies of our Lord. Um, what else we got going on? Oh, um, the day before that, Tuesday, we're going to be doing some church decorating here at 5 p.m., putting up the Christmas trees. I don't know when you normally do that in your house, but we got to wait till after Thanksgiving to do that. So uh, that'll take place a week from Tuesday, 5 p.m. here at church. We'll get everything set and ready to go. That's all I have this morning. Oh, there are still crafts, um, having another craft sale back there today. So you can walk through and um, Cindy will be back there, correct? Um, right now. Stephanie will be back there. Okay, wonderful. Um, you look at the wonderful crafts that some of our um, women of the springs have made. God be with you till we see each other again.